Ruby Rose is, all things considered, a very simple character. She has her struggles, especially in recent volumes, but a closer look at the character herself, ignoring for a moment all of the chaos that so often surrounds her, reveals that she really is just hopeful. She's often called something of a Mary Sue as a result, but that's the core of her character. She is that smaller, more honest soul. After all, it is her hope that has carried Team Ruby through so much, and none of them would be who they were or where they were without her. It is Ruby Rose, kind, something of a Mary Sue, not terribly complex Ruby Rose, who even at her darkest hour, in her most harrowing moment, at the time when all seemed lost, it is her who kept going. It is her who managed to pick herself back up, remember where she came from and who she is, and keep hoping for a better tomorrow. Ruby is introduced to the viewer as incredibly capable, but naive, shy, and somewhat out of her element. She beats the bricks off of some armed robbers, but when she goes to Beacon, she finds herself lost and alone until she gets a hand up from John. She keeps kind of fumbling over herself and her interactions with people until she meets Blake for the second time and we receive the following interaction. Why is that? Hoping you'll live happily ever after? Well, I'm hoping we all will. It gives a very clear image of who Ruby is as a person. She can be rather childish, but at her core, she's always hopeful. And even if it's a big dream, she just wants the best for people. Moving on into the Emerald Forest, we see a similar mix of Ruby's incredible skill and awkwardness. She takes down Grimm very efficiently, but has difficulty interacting with Weiss. She moves almost faster than Weiss can track, but also tends to get in Weiss's way during a fight. Despite this, when things get tough, we see her shine and take well to a leadership role in the fight against the Nevermore and Deathstalker. Later in Volume 1, Ruby also plays a very important role in inspiring Jean towards his role as a leader for Team Juniper as well. Her argument here isn't very complicated. Jean is feeling like he's failing his team, and Ruby tells him that he isn't allowed to be a failure as long as he's the leader. It's rather blunt and not very deep, but it's also exactly what he needs to hear. It gives him hope. During the events of Volume 2, Ruby and Penny see each other again, and Ruby learns that Penny is a robot. This was very difficult for Penny to share with her, but it's a new kind of hope. Penny's life is under constant watch and loneliness. She loves her father who created her, and General Ironwood is kind to her, but the nature of her existence means she must be kept under close watch and isn't really allowed to be close to people. Opening up like that to her only friend was new and exciting and refreshing to her. She's never had a friend like that before, and Ruby inspired hope in her for a brighter future for herself. Volume 3 brings with it disaster. It begins bright and exciting with the Vital Festival and the tournament, but darkness is growing in the background. The ending of Volume 3 is a minor apocalypse, and it brings the heroes of the story all the way down to their lowest, but Ruby still holds on to hope. When Yang is feeling guilty after injuring Mercury, it is Ruby who helps keep the gang's hopes up. All of Team Ruby and Juniper is feeling low, but Ruby always knows the words to help keep their spirits up and ready for the fights ahead. The fights ahead, of course, are far more unregulated than any of them expect, but Ruby continues to act as a leader for those around her and hold up hope. She is the first strike against the Nevermore when it breaks through the Colosseum's barrier. She leads the students in defense of Vale, and it is Ruby who takes the initiative to take down Roman Torchwick and reclaim the skies. That hope can't last forever, though. Regardless of Ruby's efforts, Penny and Pyrrha still die, Yang still loses her arm, Weiss and Blake both still leave, and Vale still falls. In spite of everything, though, Ruby's eyes still shine with a hopeful silver light. The first we see of Ruby in Volume 4 is her defeating a Grimm and bringing hope to a small town that was being terrorized by the monster. It's a good representation of who Ruby is as a character and the dreams she wants to fulfill as a huntress. Much of Volume 4 goes on with Team Ranger feeling pretty low. They're facing major threats, 
Crow appears and gives them a heavy dose of bad news about the reality of their situation, and they keep coming upon ruined towns. Much of the journey, especially after Crow gets poisoned, has done little more than ruin the gang's morale, but once John and Ruby reach Kuroyuri, John tells Ruby that she is the reason they've been able to get so far in the first place. Ruby's feeling as though everything that has happened is her fault for bringing everyone along on her journey, but John makes it clear that this journey gave them a new hope for the future after Beacon fell. Volume 5 is much slower. Ruby doesn't need to carry that weight on her shoulders for much of the volume because they've accomplished their goal. They've reached Mistral, they've found Crow and Ozpin. Ruby brings a moment of levity when discussing Jean still not having unlocked his siblings, but in general, everyone's hopes are already up, and things are looking good for the crew in Mistral. It's a break from all the chaos and despair happening in the world around them. For some time, they get to relax, train, and not have to deal directly with the stress of battling monsters daily and seeing with their own eyes the destruction those monsters can bring. During that break, she does have a serious conversation with Oscar about how she manages to keep her hopes up. During that time, Ruby admits that she is scared, but that fear is why she has to keep going. In Oscar's head, Ospin tells him that Ruby has something, a spark of some kind, that inspires those around her to keep going in the darkest of times. That is why she is such a beacon of hope to those around her. Ruby's first major play in Volume 6 is a sacrifice. Her and Team Ruby take the relic and venture into the wintry wilderness alone, drawing the Grim away from the passengers of the train. It's an honorable act, but they then find themselves alone, far from civilization. There, they are forced to learn the truth of the enemy they face, and the entire team is flooded with despair. Through it all, through the news that the villain they face cannot be killed, through the news that they have been lied to for years, through the fact that there is very likely nothing that can be done to stop the overwhelming evil they stand against, Ruby still holds out help. She still pushes the team through to their next goal, and she still makes sure they don't give up yet. When the group reaches the farm, they all begin to feel a lot worse about their journey, and Weiss questions if they should even be going to Atlas anymore if Salem can't be killed anyways. It starts small, but Ruby still does what she can to keep Weiss's hopes up. Eventually, the weight starts to bear down on the entire team, though, and Ruby realizes something is wrong, and her stubbornness keeps them moving and holding onto the lamp as they go. Down in the well, when the apathy is surrounding them, it is once again Ruby who saves them, who keeps fighting and hoping and shining with a silver light. Ruby also gives a new hope to Maria after Maria tells them about her past and how she feels that she abandoned her duty as a huntress. Through Ruby, Maria gains a new role as a mentor for the next generation and can make up for lost time from the mantle she used to carry. Ruby later also finds herself inspiring Crow to keep going as well when he brings the group down in response to Jean's plan to steal an airship. Crow is hit worst by Ospin's lies because that was the only place he had ever felt like he belonged and it was torn away from him by the person he thought he could trust most. Ruby gives him hope, not just for the future, but also for himself to be better. Volume 6 concludes with Team Ruby bringing down a giant mecha, which is, of course, awesome, but more importantly, it takes away an important tool for protecting Solitas just before it comes under attack from Grimm. In its place, Ruby once again steps up and learns to use her silver eyes at the last second, bringing hope to the people of Solitas. Volume 7 starts rough for the group, but quickly gives them a fresh hope that things can get better. The first chunk of the volume is spent with the group working with the Aesops, training, planning their next moves with Ironwood, and learning about the current state of Atlas and Mantle. For a time, it seems things will be just like Beacon again. Unfortunately, things become just like Beacon again. First begins its turn for the worst when Tyrion massacres civilians at Robin's party, and it only escalates from there. The next major play Ruby makes to bring hope to the masses is directly to the people of Mantle during the Grim attack. The people are hopeful and trusting in Ironwood, and united against Salem due to Ruby's encouragement of Ironwood and her work directly on the front lines against the Grim. The return to Atlas, though, and talking directly to Salem, it breaks Ruby for a moment there. Salem appearing also breaks Ironwood, though, and in that moment, everything changes. Ruby informs the rest of her team about what Ironwood is doing, and because of her actions, hope survives. Volume 7 ends in what seems to be complete despair. Salem approaches on a grim of incredible size with an army following it, 
Atlas and Mantle are divided, and most of the common people are left defenseless. This time, though, the heroes are ready. The small group that still stands, stands together, and they haven't given up hope just yet. Volume 8 begins with our heroes at their worst. Apocalypse is approaching, and they can't agree on a path forward. But Ruby is holding out hope for a better future. Her plans to go back up to Atlas and try to get a message out warning the rest of the world about Salem is hope. Hope that those who hear her message can prepare for a better tomorrow. Hope that those in Mantle and Atlas will survive long enough to see a better world after Salem is defeated. That hope is made manifest in Ruby's message to the world. The truth is revealed to everyone, globally. No secrets kept. And as terrifying as the truth is, there is also hope in that message. It is a message to unite, to stand together and prepare for the coming apocalypse. And that unity is hope. As the volume progresses, hints of the stress Ruby is under begin to show. For a moment, it's Blake that needs to bring Ruby hope and motivation to continue. That stress is only compounded when the veil is pulled back and the Hound is revealed to be a mutated person with silver eyes. When Yang and Ruby reunite, Yang assures Ruby that what they're doing is right and that they always need hope. Things look really bad for them, and the truth of what the Hound was terrifies them, but as long as they keep hoping, they can find a path forward. As their plans progress, our heroes are flying high, but Volume 8's finale crashes their hope back into the ground, just like the kingdom they were trying so hard to protect. The citizens of Atlas and Mantle and much of the heroes' party are left stranded in a sandstorm, and Team Ruby and Jean have fallen and are thought to be dead. Volume 9 begins in solitude. Ruby is alone. The person, who for so much of the story was an icon of hope for the people around her, now finds herself alone and without hope. She quickly meets Little, who can, at the very least, provide her some company, but Ruby needs her team. She finds Weiss and Blake, and eventually Yang, but time makes it clear that Ruby has suffered deeper wounds than the surface would show, and more severe than just her friends can heal. As Weiss begins to fill the rest of Team Ruby in on what happened after they fell, Ruby passes out from the stress of it all, and the stress won't be letting up anytime soon. The group quickly runs headfirst into a physical metaphor of Ruby's lack of hope when Jinxie demands payment in the form of hope, and Ruby can't afford to pay. For a moment, the hope that rests at the core of her being shows itself when she refuses to give up during the prince's game, but it doesn't stick around for long. Ruby has simply lost too much. The herbalist forces the team to face themselves and decide who they are, and the rest of the team can accept themselves easily. They know who they are. Except for Ruby. The burden has become too great for her to bear anymore. Every mistake made along the way, the destruction of Atlas, the fall of Beacon, Penny and Pierre's death, the burden of leadership itself, and the death of her mother, it is all becoming too much for Ruby to bear, and she almost lets it all fall away before the herbalist is stopped. Eventually, they meet Jean again. Yang and Blake finally admit their feelings for each other, and Ruby gets back Crescent Rose. What would be a happy and hopeful moment, a physical metaphor of Ruby finding a piece that had been missing from her, is met with that same emptiness. Ruby isn't the person who once wielded Crescent Rose. She's lost her hope and changed fundamentally. Her scythe no longer fits into the puzzle the same way, and until she can refit her own pieces back together, Crescent Rose won't fit in the same way in her hands. Eventually, she hits her breaking point, and that puzzle all falls apart. When the dam breaks and floods the paper village, so too does Ruby's. She snaps, she can't handle any more guilt or pressure or the burden of leadership, and she runs away. Neo finds her while she's alone and forces her to come face to face with everyone she feels like she's failed. Everyone she feels like she's responsible for the death of. Neo is embodying all of Ruby's darkest fears, all of the most personal things she feels guilt over, and giving her a way out, through the tree. Neo wants Ruby erased, broken down, and wiped away. She's tearing away everything Ruby has and leaving her empty, leaving her only way out to be erased by the tree, and Ruby takes that way out. In that decision is lost hope. It's a decision to give up on who she is and be replaced. That decision empties her. She is left with nothing. All the pieces of who she was, who she is, and who she could be laid out in front of her. The issue is, even presented with all that choice, she doesn't know who she wants to be anymore. She admits to the smith inside the tree that everything is so heavy that she feels a constant weight of not being enough. As she begins to fit those pieces of herself back together, though, she gains a sense of self-worth and realizes that 
She doesn't need to be anything or anyone else. She is enough to bear that burden and enough to carry that hope with her once again.